Hi guys, welcome back. This is part three of our Fake Bark series. In this video, we're going to paint our trunks. And even though I only paint one on screen, they are both painted the exact same way. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to wash the entire thing with black paint. And what I mean by wash is you're going to mix it with water. We want to get the paint into all the nooks and crannies, so we need it to be runny. And what I do is mix a full bottle of water with each bottle of paint. So one of these into a bowl and then one of these filled with water into the bowl and then mix it well. And I'm using two brush sizes. The little one is to get into all the little nooks and crannies. I'll show you that when, as we uh, get further into this. So if you've already done floors or whatever inside your house, make sure that you cover those up because this does run. Okay, so once I get the paint on there, I let it dry. I actually set it in front of a, a fan or two and let it all dry. And then you'll notice when you turn it, that there'll be places that the paint didn't get into. And that's what I use this little paintbrush for. So I just go along and I just rub in all those little areas that has missing paint. Uh, when you start to do your highlights, you'll, you'll notice that these will show up if you don't catch them now. Okay, so once the black is dry, I'm gonna put another dark color on here. I'm gonna be using Burnt Umber. Now remember, these are my color choices. You can choose other colors if you want. And you'll notice that I'm not trying to get it inside all those creases, I'm just brushing on top. All right, so we're gonna let that dry completely. So I'll just set it under the fans for now, and then we'll come back and we're gonna do another coat of another color. All right, that coat is dry, and now I'm gonna go with another darker brown, and it's this one's a cinnamon brown. And I'm not gonna be putting as much of this paint on as I did the last coat. What I mean by lighter, I'm not pressing so hard on my brush. So that coat, coat is dry now. And now I'm going to be doing a very light dry brushing of a like a tan color, this one right here. And this one is called Soft Suede. But again, you don't have to get the same one, just as long as it's a lighter color. I'm actually going to dip my brush in there and then I'm going to work some of it off on a piece of cardboard or a cloth. So I only have a little bit on my brush and then I'm going to dry brush it onto the trunk. Okay, I'm going to do it again. Work some of it off onto a piece of cardboard. Look how beautiful that comes up. I love the highlights that that gives. And I'm going to keep doing different colors until I like what I see. Um, I'm actually going to be putting another uh, brown on here. I'm going to use a raw sienna, like a golden brown. And I'm going to be adding that as well. And I'm not cleaning my brush in between. I'm using the same brush throughout and I'm not cleaning it. Okay, just want to work off the excess. Now I can, and I'll go over random spots. I want to show you um, how I use black to shadow out some places to make some places look deeper and darker than others. It enhance some of the cracks and stuff. So I'm just going to take my little brush that has the black paint. And I'm going to just go around where I want to exaggerate anything um, as far as cracks goes. And don't worry, this can all be toned down after. And actually, once the black dries, it lightens up quite a bit. Okay, and then definitely in here, I'm going to use the black. I could take my brush and use my uh, tan color and now I would just go over the parts that I want to stand out a bit more like the parts that are sticking out it 
the more you do, the more paint, the more highlights, then the more shadows, uh, it just adds to the to the overall look, I think. It, I mean, you can't really mess it up if you just keep doing your highlights and um, trying different colors. and It just adds to it. So it's late at night here, and I'm coming to the end of the uh, editing, and I've been doing this all day. So I just spent the last 10 minutes talking to you on film. <laughs> My camera wasn't even on. <laughs> anyway, I was talking about gray, and I use gray to add to the aged look of the of knot holes and injuries to trees and I, I added this what I thought was on film and you could see it coming to life here when I was tapping it into place but I just take my gray paint and I work it off my brush onto a piece of cardboard just like I showed you how to do the highlights and then I just tap it so like on spots like this I've seen this in real life on trees I'm not sure if it's like an old injury or something Anyway, I would use my black paint and my gray paint. So you could use gray on pieces like that. And I've actually used it in different areas on this tree as well. I would just tap it in different areas and just gives it like an ashy look, just like on real trees. Again, here you can see where I used my gray and just tapped it into place there. So you just work with the colors that you have and see what you can come up with. And really use your black to exaggerate those cracks and creases. It really adds a lot of character to the tree. And the other uh, bit of advice I'd give you, when I was doing my great big tree, that was a whole lot of surface to cover and you can get caught up in trying to get it to look a certain way right away and what will happen is you'll get frustrated and you'll keep working and working and working and nothing will change it just be the same thing that you're, you're not getting the color that you want what I did when I start feeling like that was just let the colors rest so I would put everything away and go to bed and the next morning the colors will look a little bit different because they've they've had a chance to settle and the colors do change the tone will change and you'll be a lot happier the next day or you know leave for a couple hours and then come back and uh, it just looks a lot better so that's a good piece of advice I think let your colors rest give them a chance and then come back and see maybe they're the perfect color and you just think they're not because they're wet at the time all right and you'll notice that the inside of my trunks have changed color and that was um, this one here actually I removed my carton out of there. I did it off camera, but I just reached in through the top and I pulled out the carton and all the tin foil and I just laid in some of that uh, black tissue paper. And I'm doing that because I, I made a little character for inside of this tree and he won't fit in there with that carton. So I had to remove that carton. And then this one is still the carton. You can see in the top, look at that. Can you believe? These trunks just started out as milk cartons. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Anyway, I, all I did was just brush in some brown and black paint inside the walls there and the floor as well. But of course, you can do anything you want to the inside of yours. Oh, and one more thing I want to show you. You can totally light up your tree with a little push nightlight. I use these in my dollhouses all the time and it's just one of these little guys. It's really bright so what I did was just put masking tape over top just to tone it down. Yeah and then it, you can stick it up in there and light up your little tree. One of the most common questions I get is if we can put these outside and I've never done that myself so the only thing I can tell you is to go to your local hardware store and talk to a professional there. They would have a better idea what to do to weatherize uh, or weatherproof. Uh, pieces like this. So that brings us to the end. The only thing I want to do now is like a little pros and cons uh, between the two methods. I would have to say if I was going to pick a winner of the two methods it would have to be paper towel bark and that's not just because it's kind of like my baby it's because there's many more pros to the paper towel bark than there is to the clay. Although for big structures I definitely would use the clay again because if I was to 
cover my big tree with paper towel and <laughs> that would have been really time consuming I probably wouldn't have gotten a look that I wanted and it would have been really messy because that glue tends to drip a lot as it's drying so for big structures the clay wins but for smaller structures I would have to say paper towel wins by a long shot it's lighter it's way lighter than the clay it's unbreakable I could drop this one right here and nothing would happen to it but if I drop this one it would probably crack or pieces would break off for sure um, it's cheap to make the materials are easier to find and it dries a lot faster than the clay does so I would have to say paper towel wins although clay is pretty paper towel can be just as beautiful if you spend a little bit more time adjusting and rearranging the way you lay it down when I made this one I went very very fast and you saw in the previous video that I had to fix a few areas because I did go a little too fast but it doesn't take any time at all to lay down that paper towel but if the more time you spend with it the more realistic you can make it look alright guys that's it I hope you had fun and I hope you guys make yourself a little tree trunk and if you do please post pictures on my Facebook page dollhouses and the things that go in them I'd love to see thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon